Alrighty, my Superfly from Warbonnet came in this week and so today I decided to string it up and uh, attach my guy lines and stuff and uh, just see how it, how it did. Uh, I've got a couple of other tarps that I have made but uh, haven't purchased a tarp since uh, my first tarp that I bought, which was a Kelty Noah 12, which I still have, but I use it, you know, for a group shelter or something like that. But it's pretty heavy for a, it's nice, got plenty of coverage, but uh, it is kind of heavy. So, so I got this, this is uh, the Warbonnet Superfly with the doors and all. This is my first tarp with a door, with doors. My other tarps are uh, just cat cut, uh, one seal and the other two are argon, seal argon that I got from Dutch. And they're fine, but I wanted something for the winter time or for storms. So started to make one, but decided to go ahead and just buy one. And this is the one I got. So this is how I've got it strung up. Uh, I looked at some videos and did some reading to, to see what people usually do and how they're stringing up the superflies. I watched Brandon's video uh, on how he does it and uh, his was a, a good way to do it too but uh, this is kind of uh, how I've been stringing up my tarps before the ones without the doors and so I figured I would just go the same route for now uh, with this one so what I do on the corners for the tie outs uh, I've got a this is actually some uh, bow fishing line it's a Dacron braided line that I run for the corners. I do a, a fixed eye one in around the stake, do two loops here, and then a piece of bungee in there for a tensioner in between them. And then I use a Prusik fixed loop, uh, Prusik onto the corner, or Lark's head onto the corner, and then Prusik on here. And I'll probably trim a little bit of this off. I left them kind of long for now but that's that's how I've, I've done the corners for a long time on my other tarps it's always worked well it holds pretty good I can adjust the tension from under the tarp if I needed to easily there on the corners so that's what I did on the corners uh, I do run a continuous ridge line I, I have run the uh, ridge line from each end before but uh, I just have gone back to a continuous ridge line it's just a personal preference the other one works as well but since i've started playing with these pole pole mods i guess or putting some poles on the tarp uh, i went back to a continuous ridge line uh, all i do this is a zingit ridge line uh, i've got a dutch tarp wasp at this end and then i've got uh, on the other end i've got a, a uh, dutch hook on the other end I'll show you that in a minute, but uh, this end is a tarp wasp, uh, and this is Zingit. I think I've got about 35 feet total. Then I just, this is a piece of mason line, fixed loop, with a prussic onto the ridge line, a little S beaner, connect to that, connect to the tarp. I don't have snake skins yet, but uh, I'll probably be doing some snake skins for this before too long. And then on this end, uh, I just do a Dutch hook uh, in a fixed eye on this end. So that's that's what I've got on that side. Same deal here. Fixed loop with a prussic onto the ridge line with a S beaner. Now, for these poles, these are some carbon arrows that I have had for years. They're real small ones that I quit using when I a while back and went to a, a regular size carbon arrow. But I still had these. And so what I did was, uh, this is actually a broadhead insert, screw on there. It's threaded on both sides, and it's threaded correctly. Actually, it wasn't threaded correctly to match the outserts on the arrows. So I, it's a soft aluminum, so I actually have a tap and die set. So I, I re-threaded one end. One end, of course, screwed into the arrow uh, insert there. But the other end was made for the broadhead. Since it's soft aluminum, I just took a tap and die set and re-threaded the other end of it. And now these two screw together 
and they unscrew there in the center. Did the same thing on both ends, uh, or both sets of arrows, and uh, just left the knock on there. And I just, as you can see, I just got a, you know, a piece of, this is Mason's line, braided Mason line. I just got a loop on each end, a lark set it here, loop it in the knock there. And uh, so far it's held up well. I haven't had a really strong storm, but you know, I've had it in some rain and it, and it did fine. And I run it over the top of the ridge line. We're going to see how this works with the Superfly. Uh, haven't done that yet, but it's worked on the other tarps that uh, I've got. So that's my pole, pole mod. The arrows uh, come apart in the center. I slide them down in the side pocket of my pack and uh, behind the, some bungee that runs along the side. I've got a ULA uh, catalyst and I just slide them down in that side pocket and they ride pretty good uh, that way uh, they weigh less than three ounces for the poles 2.8 ounces for all four poles together so that's not too bad uh, on the doors I had read some stuff about what people do for the doors uh, so I kind of copied what some others have done I took a piece of uh, bungee and I put a mitten hook on that end and then I cook hook that to this corner and then I take uh, another mitten hook slide it over the bungee thread it over the bungee put a cord lock on there and tie a knot in the end and then I can adjust the tension a little bit there and close the doors overlap each other like that and that seems to close them up pretty good so that's what I'm gonna try for now and we'll see uh, if that lasts if I have to go with some other option. I think I've read that some people say that Brandon uh, recommends using a, a fixed piece of line and not the bungee, but I've read that some people say that they prefer the bungee better because it's uh, less likelihood of tearing something up if you trip over it or something like that. So I could, I could see that. So uh, I'm going to get on the inside, let you see what the inside looks like, how open it is with the poles. All right, so here we are inside the tarp. And you can see that uh, there's plenty of room in here. Uh, got plenty of space. I uh, probably could hang it a little higher if I really wanted to, but uh, right now I just got it strung up kind of low. And uh, man, this is this is going to be nice. Plenty of room uh, with the, with those par poles with the poles up there. That really makes a big difference. Opens it up. Doors seal it up nicely. Um, tighten those up some if I wanted. Uh, if it really came down to it, I probably could stake them down. Put a, run a line down and, and actually stake these down to the ground if I really wanted to tighten it up. But uh, as it is right now, I think it'll, I think it'll do just fine. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip the doors open and let you see how it looks like with the doors pulled back. Alright, this is, uh, got the doors open now and uh, opened them a couple of different ways. One way on the on one side, I've seen, seen people do it this way, uh, pulled them to the outside and I uh, just took the two bungee cords, connected them in the center here uh, and then I can tighten them up with these. But um, I don't know because these pullouts kind of get in the way when I do it that way. Uh, I don't know that it would be a real problem, but it might be if the rain was really heavy or, of course, I guess if the rain's really heavy, I'd close the doors. So maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's just, it'll just sit like that when it's a kind of a nice day. But uh, that's how it looks on when I pull the doors open on the outside. Now over here on the other side, what I did is pull the doors to the inside. So I just ran the bungees together on the inside and that seems to alleviate any kind of problem interfering with the pullouts. But it does kind of hang down a little bit. So I guess I could see where it might get in the way and hooking on things and bumping into my hammock or whatever if it was under here. But I don't know that that would be a problem, but that's what she looks like set up that way. So that's uh, with the doors on the inside and over here 
is what it looks like with the doors pulled open on the outside. And of course you could do different configurations. You could close one side of the doors, you could close the back doors and leave the fronts open or you close one in. You know, there's several several options I'm sure there. But uh, like I said, I hadn't had this out anywhere yet. I just got it this week, but I wanted to get it pitched and get all the guy lines and ridge lines and everything attached and uh, get it all set up. So I'll, I'll get it all bundled up back in the bag. Stuff sack's really a nice small stuff sack. Doesn't take up very much room at all. This is it here. Uh, but uh, I'll get it all bundled up and I'll weigh it. I think the claimed weight is 19 ounces on his website, but that, of course that's without any lines or anything like that. No snake skins. So mine will be weighed without any snake skins too. I haven't made any snake skins yet, but I'm going to bundle it all up and weigh it and I'll post in the uh, description here or on the screen here what the weight is with it all put together. So that's it. That's my Superfly. I'm sure this is not the first video you've seen of the Superfly, but uh, I'd been looking for just some little detailed recommendations on how it, people stringing theirs up and what they're doing for corners and poles and pullouts and doors and how they're connecting things. And so I thought I would just share what I'd found and what I had put together and whether or not it's going to work in the long run, I don't know because I haven't had it out on the trail yet. But, uh, as it sits right now, I think it's going to work out pretty good uh, the way I've got it run here. So that's it. Hope you found this useful and hope you enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you later. See ya.